Who said you got a yes under the respects two minutes? Okay. <laughs> Boss, I got Thanks. Ron. Seth, you're second. Y'all come on up. Did you get me on the list? Yeah, I'll put you on. Uh, yeah. There's going to be some people that'll miss. Hey, Pop, Pop, you want to come on up? Yeah, yeah. Hey, Paul. Bob's going to go to the floor and call. You're, you're in live. Hey, Diana. Come on up. Oh, I'm after Bob Good. Yeah, you're after. Yeah. I'm yeah. on something. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Y'all ready? Yes, sir. I want to thank the media for coming out today. This this meeting is to, and I want to thank Senator Johnson, uh, the congressman here who is standing behind me, uh, to call attention to the World Health Organization and a meeting that's going to take place on May 27th in Geneva. The time to fight against the World Health Organization, which will do away with our ability as a nation uh, to make our own decisions when it comes to vaccinations, when it comes to the pandemics that hit this country. We're not going to cede everything to China, which is what the World Health, Ex World Health Organization will do. And get this, China is labeled as a developing nation. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the second largest economy in the world. It cedes power to China uh, when we have got to fight China, which is our enemy. So here's what I'm urging everyone, you and the media particularly. We've got to demand transparency and a time to consider the new pandemic agreement uh, and all the amendments. We need to have them four months in advance. We cannot have them like they're being presented. We've got to demand the pre precise financial obligations of this treaty. They're calling for 5% for the United States to give to developing countries, including China, 5% of our what we spend on health care. Somebody define that for me. We, 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 uh, United, the United States already gave $800 million this past year. We've got to oppose any inclusion of any language advocating censorship or government efforts, efforts to prevent misinformation and disinformation. The leader of that, folks, ladies and gentlemen, is China. We've got to ensure that China cannot take advantage of special provisions uh, intended for, quote, developing countries. And basically, we have got to object to anything that's agreed to by the Biden administration. As Senator Johnson will tell you, it goes back to the Senate where it takes a two-thirds vote. We've got to make sure the Senate has advice and consent versus, as, as spelled out in, in the Article 2 of the Constitution. So, we have got a list of speakers. I would like to call on Senator Johnson next, followed by Bob Good. Senator Johnson. Well, thank you, Congressman Norman, uh, Sovereignty Coalition for putting this together and all of you for attending. Um, this is, what's at stake is the sovereignty of America. There, there's, there's nothing short of that, and that's why this is so important. Uh, I'm, I'm leading a letter. Uh, we've got, already got about half of the Republican senators on this letter. I'm, I'm going to just read a couple of excerpts in terms of why, why this is important. Instead of addressing the WHO's well-documented shortcomings, the treaty focuses on mandated resource and technology transfers, shredding intellectual property, infringing free speech, and supercharging the WHO. It completely ignores the fact that we're still unsure of COVID-19's origins because Beijing continues to block a legitimate independent investigation. Again, China has far too much control over the WHO we certainly don't want the WHO controlling our individual health decisions. It goes on. In light of the high stakes for our country and our constitutional duty, we call upon you. This is a letter to President Biden. One, 
to a drug administration support for the current IHR amendments and pandemic treaty negotiations to shift your administration's focus to comprehensive WHO reforms and address its persistent failures without expanding its authority, and three, should you ignore these calls, submit any pandemic-related agreement to the Senate for its advice and consent. Now, I have a, a bill that would deem any agreement between the Biden administration and the World Health Organization a treaty, make it come before the Senate for debate, for discussion, and for ratification. That is absolutely crucial. And by the way, the American people support this. Uh, this group has commissioned a poll. 75% of Americans believe U.S. elected officials should be making decisions on Americans' health, not international officials. And 64% believe it should be submitted to the Senate for treaty ratification. So with that, I'll turn it over to uh, Congressman Go Gosar. No, oh, sounds good. good. Okay. Thank, thank, you, thank you for letting me go out of order here to have to get to the floor. But thank you to Ralph Norman for leading us on the House side on this very important initiative. Thank you to Frank Gaffney, our friend, who's been the champion for this cause for the past year or more. Uh, I've often said over the past year, this is the most important issue that's getting the least amount of attention relative, relative to its importance. Uh, I, this Biden administration is certainly the America last administration. Remember, Biden was vice president during the American Apology Tour. Remember that during the Obama-Biden administration? Uh, this administration, this president doesn't believe in American exceptionalism. He doesn't believe in American sovereignty. He doesn't believe in preserving the foundational principles that have made us the greatest nation in the history of the world. And that nowhere is that demonstrated the difference between him and President Trump. President Trump pulled the U.S. out of the WHO. The WHO, which revealed how corrupt it was as a tool of communist China with the way that they handled or didn't handle the China virus. And what does President Biden do? Immediately upon getting into office, he puts us back under the WHO, begins to fund the WHO again. I'm proud to be a co-sponsor, along with many of my colleagues, of Chip Roy's bill to defund the WHO. We've got to call out and expose this dangerous treaty. We shouldn't even call it a treaty because the administration is trying to prevent the Senate from having to ratify a treaty for those like Senator Johnson to protect the American people. But we need to call out this treaty that would compromise American sovereignty, would put us under the thumb of the U.N. and Communist China and the WHO for things, whatever they want to declare a crisis, whether it's a poverty crisis or a gun violence crisis or a climate crisis or a health crisis and make us have to listen to WHO. That is not constitutional. That is not the United States. I stand united with my colleagues in calling that out. And it's my pleasure now to yield to my good friend from Arizona, Paul Gosar. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Now, uh, and I thank uh, Congressman Norman for putting this thing, this uh, press conference together. You're going to hear me say this three times. The sovereignty of the United States is at stake. President Trump was right to remove us from the United Nations Health Organization. But Joe Biden continues his foolish pursuit of giving up our sovereignty again to another order outside of the United States. Whose governing body is going to be meeting next, uh, next month? To ratify a treaty that would direct the WHO, and you've heard over and over again, if a treaty is going to go forward, that has to be had that vivacious debate, it has to go to the Senate. Who embarrassed itself with the COVID-19 pandemic? It cozied up to China and allowed the China to lie that the COVID-19 was a myth and the virus continued to spread. If the WHO is, was taken seriously, the virus seriously, lives could have been saved. In fact, instead, the WHO scared people into not seeing their doctor, not taking effective therapeutics and ingesting death, deadly vaccines as well as causing depression and loneliness on a massive scale for no reason. Countless deaths ensued. As a healthcare provider who understands the, the, the very importance of prevention, I can tell you that Americans should never allow an international body to dictate their healthcare choices. Unelected globalists with power over America's healthcare choices would have our founders rolling in their graves. Biden should never sign, and the Senate must reject this badly flawed agreement. In fact, rather than expanding the breadth of the WHO, it should eliminate it altogether. What benefit will we get? Nothing. And the world's not a better place by doing this. With that, I want to say thank you very much and kneel to my gentleman friend from, uh, from Wisconsin, Tom Tiffany. Good morning, everyone. So we've seen this show before in many different ways over the last three plus years. You think about American energy independence that we no longer have. Uh, this administration seeks the <coughs> diminishment of the United States of, uh, United States of America 
and you most particularly see it down at the southern border where they're giving up American sovereignty. The same thing is happening here with the WHO. Numerous mistakes were made during COVID. We gave far too much power or they took too much power amongst the healthcare bureaucracy, the federal healthcare bureaucracy here in Washington, D.C. They lacked accountability to the American people. But one of the key failures that happened very early on in 2019, Taiwan, Taiwan raised the specter that COVID could be dangerous to the world. The World Health Organization ignored them. And they went so far as to continue to carry the water of communist China while not heeding those warnings. So we need accountability by our bureaucracy, our healthcare bureaucracy here in Washington, D.C., but we also need accountability to the American people with world organizations like the World Health Organization that the Biden administration wants us to get entangled with even deeper. I've introduced a bill H.R. 1425, no WHO Pandemic Preparedness Treaty without Senate approval. I am so pleased to author that bill with my home state senator, Senator Johnson, who has been one of the leading advocates for, for accountability by our health care bureaucracy. Let's get this treaty, let's treat this agreement that the Biden administration wants to do as a treaty and have a vote before the United States Senate. Thank you so much for having me here today. I'd like to um, introduce Representative Diana Harshbarger from the great uh, state of Tennessee. Yeah, next. Go. Hello, Frank Gaffney. Okay, Frank Gaffney. Yes, sir. It's good to have you here today. Good to see you, sir. Thank Bye. you. Um, my name's Frank Gaffney. I'm the executive chairman of the Center for Security Policy, and I'm very proud to be the co-founder with my friend and colleague, Reggie Littlejohn, of the Sovereignty Coalition. This coalition has come together to fight these threats to the sovereignty of the United States, to the states' rights of our various states, and to the medical freedoms, among others, of the American people. Uh, there is actually a bit of a misunderstanding about this. There are two treaties that the WHO is working on at the moment. Uh, one involves amendments to its existing international health regulations. The other is the pandemic agreement. Both must be brought to the Senate for its advice and consent. They both have a couple of things in common. They both involve a concentration of power that is unprecedented in human history. In the person of Tedros Ghebreyesus, the Director General of the World Health Organization. This is all the more astounding given his track record. He's a Maoist involved in terrorism in his native Ethiopia, plucked for the obscurity by the Chinese Communist Party to do this job. What is the job? To promote global governance, as they call it. What is global governance? It is not the same thing as our kind of limited, accountable, representative, constitutional government. The idea that this guy would fail up in this way is unimaginable, and yet that's what's in the works. The damage that he could do with the concentration of power to tell us when we have a public health emergency, yes, but also what we must do about it is simply unacceptable. We are forging as a result of the danger that we faced in just 39 days from today that both of these treaties will be approved by something called the World Health Assembly. We're standing up a not now emergency campaign to defend Americans sovereignty we want you to go to sovereigntycoalition.org to join us in that fight thank you very much let me call on uh, Tony Perkins followed by Matt Slap Tony thank you Con Congressman Norman and uh, Frank for organizing this it'll be very quick there, there are a multitude of issues that are of concern here we've heard about the sovereignty I want to bring your attention to one aspect of this it's very dangerous and it is the censorship aspect. It would essentially mint into global law requiring all the parties to make standard what we had to go through in COVID, where there was a silencing of any dissenting voices. Now, when you are monitoring counterfeit currency, 
you want to look at the real thing. What this would do for those counterfeiting and false information, it would give them total control. Given their track record of how they lied to the American people, and this issue is actually currently being is before our Supreme Court and what the Biden administration did in silencing dissenting voices, this would be on a global basis. And if you're trafficking in counterfeit information, you don't want the real thing out there. We need to make sure that the American people have every right to challenge what is happening here in the United States when it comes to emergencies in government procedures. This needs to stop in its tracks now. Thank you, Congressman Norman. Uh, Matt Schlapp with CPAC. I just want to say very quickly that uh, CPAC is going to score all these votes uh, concerning giving our sovereignty to someone who is our enemy. And we have a sovereignty emergency here. And, and Frank Gaffney, I want to kind of just go back to what sovereignty is. And Chris Smith knows this better than anyone. Sovereignty is what God knits in our soul when he creates us. The idea of sovereignty in America is not some strange government turn. It's the ability of the individual to have the power and authority from God to govern their lives. And what we saw with COVID is an attempt to rein back people's rights in the name of health. And they will use health to push through all the most radical elements uh, of their agenda to destroy constitutional order here in America. You can see what's going on on the streets of Brazil. You can see what's happening in the entire free world as conferences are being shut down in Europe because the hard left wants to shut down dissent and they want to shut down political speech and they will use health to do it. And, that, and, and the fact that in the hallowed halls of Congress that there is a lack of an understanding of the constitutional crisis we're in, where our own government is getting a green light to spy on us, and there's clear evidence that that happens thousands of times at a time, and now we're going to turn over more of this sovereignty to China to have the power to control the American citizenry. This is an outrage. We will band together, Frank, with your coalition, and we will make sure that all the politicians that give away our rights are held accountable for it. Thank you. Jenny Beth Martin. I'm Jenny Beth Martin with Tea Party Patriots Action. Tea Party Patriots has stood for the doctor-patient relationship for the 15 years of our existence. We understand that there is not a single one-size-fits-all solution to health care in America. And there certainly is not a one-size-fits-all solution to health care around the entire world. What we saw during COVID is that as states were able to compete with one another and show the differences in their policies, we saw which policies worked the best. If we wind up having a one-size-fits-all solution for the entire world, we may never find the solution that actually is the best. This World Health Organization, in addition to harming national sovereignty, state sovereignty, and personal sovereignty, would also harm the ability, potentially, to find the best solutions in the middle of a pandemic. For that reason, Tea Party Patriots Action is saying not now to this World Health Organization treaty, and we're also saying not ever. This is wrong, it will not solve problems, it will create more problems than it solves. And one more thing, the World Health Organization covered up the Chinese Communist Party uh, covered up for them at the beginning of the of the COVID outbreak and in 2021 before the polling from today that McLaughlin has done the Pew Research Organization found that 51 percent of Americans gave the World Health Organization a poor or only um um, only fair job rating for how they handled the coronavirus pandemic. That means we should be giving the World Health Organization less power, not more power. Andy Biggs, followed by Matt Rosendale. Hello, everybody. Andy Biggs from Arizona's 5th Congressional District. Thank you for being here today. Thanks, Ralph, for organizing this. You know, uh, let's think about this. Would you like an international multilateral institution to have determination on when we're going to have an emergency health crisis and how you deal with it in the United States of America. We didn't like it when our own government had that authority. 
Why would we cede it to some corrupt? In fact, if you look at multilateral institutions, what is the most corrupt multilateral institution? It is none other than the World, World Health Organization. Americans do not want to cede our personal health care decisions to some conglomerate owned, paid for by corrupt organizations over our own health care. We don't want to cede that. But that's what this administration is about to do. Well, thank goodness for this group of folks behind us, and we need to get this word out to Americans. And I'll tell you what, that's why I introduced this bill quite some time ago, over a year ago, H.R. 79, the Withdrawal from the WHO Act. And that's because I've known for a long time that the World Health Organization is corrupt. That's why that is over 40 sponsors. My good friend Chip Roy has a bill to defund sending money to the World Health Organization, of which this administration we has not only just paid its dues, it's literally sent hundreds of million dollars above its due amount to the World Health Organization. That has got to stop. When we look at what collapses great nations through history, it's a couple of things. Number one is they lose geographical integrity. In other words, they lose control of their borders and who's coming in? Check off for the U.S. Then they lose control of their economy because they devalue their currency. Check number two. The third thing that happens, they start ceding authority and sovereignty to other peoples, other institutions. In this case, the World Health Organization. We cannot allow that to stand. We're here to fight for it, fight against that. Please join us and join this great group of people who are leading the way in the fight to keep America safe, strong, and healthy. Thank you. Thanks, Andy. Matt Rosendale, followed by Chip Roy. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us out here on this very critical issue. Uh, just like to bring a couple of points forward. The World Health Organization considers China a developing country in need of aid to strengthen pandemic prevention. We've already established that they are the world's largest economy, second only uh, to the United States, and that they are not a growing. They're growing power and they're a growing threat. That's what everybody better remember. They communicated internationally that Beijing found no clear evidence of human-to-human -human transmission of COVID-19. These are the people that are driving the World Health Organization right now. During pu public health emergencies, they want to prioritize aid on a system of equity rather than need. We've all seen how diversity, equity, and inclusion standards have worked out in our own country, and it just does not work out well. They gave praise to China for their co containment of COVID when they literally are the ones that released it on the entire earth. It's something that has not been brought about and discussed today, and that is the WHO on guns. They want to examine the potential outcomes of public health strategies in the United States that encourage limiting access to firearms. So basically, in a nutshell, they want to disarm United States citizens, they want to direct our health care, and they want to control our copyright laws. This is what the WHO wants to do. Biden cannot unilaterally give that authority away to anyone. And I can assure you, to be clear, the people of Montana will not surrender their sovereignty to any entity or organization outside the United States government. Thank you very much for joining us today. Well, thanks, Matt. Uh, thanks, Ralph, for pulling this together. Thanks for all of our friends who are here right now. Um, Look, we're here because uh, the current administration is working right now with the World Health Organization and the United Nations to negotiate a new, quote, pandemic preparedness agreement. This agreement would subject the United States to the powers of the World Health Organization and this international treaty without going through what we need to do in the Senate, without the people's representatives having a voice and stopping ceding our sovereignty to these foreign entities that are undermining our national security in the interest of the United States. Look, this is pretty simple. Are we for standing up for Americans or are we for ceding authority to international bodies to govern us and to shove their leftist, progressive, radical, Marxist ideas onto the American people? That's what's at stake here. We're here because of the timing.
But I got to say one other thing in the throes of all of the news that we're dealing with right now. How much sovereignty of the United States are we going to cede abroad every single day? How many people need to flood across the border? 24,000 Chinese nationals, 85% of whom are single adults, have flooded across the border since last October 1. That is more than all of last year total, compared to 381 in in, in, uh, 2021, the last year that was being affected by President Trump. That's what's happening to our country. So when are we going to put America first? When are we going to put Americans first? When are we going to stop funding the organizations that are undermining our freedom, like the billions going to the United Nations, when they pass a Security Council resolution that condemns Israel effectively and calling for a ceasefire in our administration, what do they do? They abstain. It is time for us to stand up for the people of this country, stand up for our sovereignty, and we should stop funding the people across the globe who are at war with our own people. That's what's at stake this week, by the way, on the floor of the United States House. Thank you. Chris Smith. Thank you. My name is Chris Smith. I chair the Global Health Global Human Rights Committee. I'm a member of Congress from New Jersey. Last um, month, I traveled to Geneva, met with uh, a number of the delegations uh, to the World Health Assembly, uh, to the World Health Organization. And frankly, I was shocked about how so many of the delegates are just being spoon-fed misinformation and a line that they'll just get more money, uh, but their sovereignty, well, don't worry about that. Uh, This treaty, and it is a treaty, it's binding on every U.S. citizen. We will be paying huge amounts of money. Uh, It's not determined yet. Matter of fact, Article 20 of the proposed treaty uh, says the annual monetary contributions to the WHO pandemic agreement. Uh, We won't know that uh, until after December 31st, 2026. So get it passed, ratify it, pardon me, and then decide how much we're going to have to pay. Uh, Let me just, just last week... I chaired a hearing on the malign influence of the Chinese Communist Party on the United Nations. And we talked about how they have had an unbelievable impact, including Tedros, who was their hand-picked person to head up the WHO. And when COVID-19 manifested itself, he joined in their forced and and, uh, their false narrative, I should say, about the origins of COVID and the transmissibility of that from human to human. Uh, That is outrageous. And yet they then will have the ability to tell us as American citizens what we should be doing in terms of any prevention as well as therapeutics. Uh, It is a complete, I think, um, uh, abjugation of our ability to control our own health care policy. Let me also point out that uh, this is an executive agreement, more likely, that Biden will do, just like they did during the Obama administration with the nuclear arms deal with Iran. That should have been submitted for ratification by the Senate, where the kind of due diligence, the kind of of scrutiny that needed to be brought to bear never happened. Well, the same way with this. He will do it by signing something, binding every one of us uh, to a huge amount of money in the future. Finally, last week, I underscored at the hearing uh, that in 2022, the last year for which we have data, Biden gave the United Nations $18 billion, with a B, uh, to the United Nations and its agencies. We were assessed $3 billion. He gave $15 billion more. I don't know where that money came from. Where did it come from? Us. Yeah, yeah, us. But uh, what pot of money? So I would just say to you, we need to get this ratified, not ratified, scrutiny uh, over the United States Senate. And again, they even have a, an article here about no disinformation. Hello, WHO excelled in it. Reggie Little John, anti globalist Reggie. I'm Reggie Littlejohn, co-founder of the Sovereignty Coalition and founder of the Anti-Globalist International Organization. The two treaties that are going to be voted on in May 27th of this year, just a few weeks from now, are the greatest threat to freedom that the world has ever faced. Public health is being used as a tool for total control. This is not a public health issue. It's an instrument to introduce Chinese-style totalitarianism to the United States and to the world. Now, the international health regulations, if the WHO gets what it, what it wants, they will be able to mandate vaccines, mandate masks, mandate lockdowns, and mandate quarantines in the United States and all over the world. 
Also, they will be able to mandate that the governments of the world surveil and censor their citizens, no doubt through, through mandatory digital IDs, which can be used as the basis of a China so, uh, social credit system styled rule of totalitarian control. Now, the McLaughlin and Associates conducted a poll. They found out, among other things, that 74.9, almost 75 percent of citizens want the United States having freedom to run our own health care and not some international globalist organization. How are we going to stop this WHO takeover? Article 55 of the International Health Regulations states that all amendments to the, uh, to, the, to the International Health Regulations have to be submitted four months in advance. That passed on January 27th. They have completely blown that, and we should demand that, that this vote must be delayed. So, I would just say that we really need to take action now. Go to the sovereigntycoalition.org to take action on this, because once we have ceded our sovereignty, it will be all but impossible to get it back. Thank you. Thank you, Reggie. Christine Allman, head of the Eagle Foundation. Thank you. My name is Chris Allman, and I'm the president of Eagle Forum, an organization that was started 52 years ago in another battle to save our Constitution. You know, we hear a lot in this season, threat to democracy, threat to democracy. Well, we all here know that we don't actually live in a democracy. We live in a constitutional republic. But this WHO treaty, these treaties, are a threat to our constitutional republic. Number one, they take away our right to representative democracy, to elect the people that are going to make the decisions for us. 74% of the American people in the poll that came out today said they are against that. They want their elected representatives to make the decision. Number two, we live under a constitution that protects our inalienable rights. As you've heard, this WHO pandemic treaty and the health regulations interfere with our First Amendment right to free speech, our Fourth Amendment right to not be surveilled, as well as many other constitutional rights. And third, we live in a system of federalism where our Constitution, through the Tenth Amendment, gives the states the right to regulate health policy. We do not cede that right to the federal government or especially not unelected uh, international bureaucrats. For those three reasons, these documents are a threat to our constitutional republic, and that's why we're saying not now, not ever to the WHO, and calling on the United States Senate to do its job of advice and consent. Thank you very much. Thank you, Christine. Finally, our speaker is General Perry, Scott Perry. Thank you all. I'm pleased to stand with my colleagues and other friends and great patriots that are interested in the sovereignty of America. And don't be distracted at this moment. Don't you be distracted. Let's not America be distracted by what's happening in this building or what's about to happen in this building behind us. As bad as that is, and it's bad, but as bad as that is, we can do two things at once. We can pay attention to the other things that are happening around the globe and in this country. And as we speak, President Biden is planning to cede the sovereignty of the United States of America to the internationalists and the World Health Organization. The ability to decide between you and your doctor what medicine you take or do not take, whether you wear a mask or not, whether you leave your home and where you go is all potentially being seated by this president of the United States based on a signature, subverting and disregarding the Constitution of the United States, bypassing the Senate, saying it's not a treaty, doing the exact same thing that President Obama did with the Iran nuclear deal. That was bad now, then, and it's a precursor. It's a warning of what might happen very, very soon. So we're, we're gathered here today to make sure that you're all aware of what we're all aware of, that we're awake, and that we make sure that President Biden is not allowed to just sign on our behalf, and that the Senate rejects any attempt by the World Health Organization to take away our individual medical freedom, our individual choices, our choices to move about our country, our community, our homes as we please. That is literally what is at stake right now. And then, and then be forced to pay for it without even knowing what the bill is. It is unacceptable. The fact that we even have to have this press conference is breathtaking. But every single day you wake up and you say to yourself, well, what more can it be? I can't believe what just happened. They can't do anything else. Well, ladies and gentlemen, 
as bad as it is, and as bad it is as it is in dealing with this government taking away our rights every single day, just imagine how difficult it's going to be to drag our rights back away from some international organization of bureaucrats that aren't even elected, that don't care about America, don't care about our Constitution, and don't care about what we think. With that, I just urge you know, that we do the right thing here, and I'll turn it back over to our speaker, Mr. Norman. Thank you, General Perry. And I want to thank everybody that took part in this, the brave patriots. Um, we're not going. To, this isn't going to go unnoticed. We're going to call the Biden administration out for what they're doing, for selling out America like they sold us out on the border and so many other things. Now I'll, take, I'll open it up for questions. Yes, sir. Well, the question was, do we just, is there anything we can do about it? And are we just going to be in lockstep with the Democrats? No, we're going to expose it. Uh, they needed four months to get the amendments out that it's going to be considered on May 27th. That's unacceptable. I've, I've seen too many documents at the last minute, and we're just simply not, this is too important uh, to let this go by. Yes, if the media doesn't get it out, uh, it will be a tough sell. But it's got to go to the Senate. It's got to get a two-thirds vote, and it's a treaty that has to be ratified by the Senate. What, what, what would keep the president, though, from just enacting it, as you said earlier, like uh, previously with Iran, Paris, China, so treaty? Well, what I would ask him to do, and I, it'll fall on deaf, deaf ears, is to show the American people exactly what he's committing America to, show us the fine print. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the devil is in the details on most everything that uh, my colleagues and I have to deal with. So it's um, exposure is what we can provide right now, and he can lead the way as a leader of the free world. Do I think he'll do it? No. Without the media and without us raising attention to it, it will never happen. Other questions? Any off topic questions? No, this is on the WHO. Yes, sir. It's all of the above. It's world government by an elite, unelected class of bureaucrats, and China's the beneficiary. China is the beneficiary. They're not a supporting economy. They're the number two economy in the world. So, yes, China's the one behind this. Tetros, we saw what he did, with, 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 which basically lied about the, the COVID virus. We couldn't find anything out. This is ceding American sovereignty. This president does not have a right to do that. So I would answer that. It's all of the above. Congressman Good? I want to invite Congressman Roy to join uh, Mr. Norman and myself. And appreciate, again, Ralph Norman's leadership as a member of our executive board of the Freedom Caucus, along with Frank Gaffney and our friends here, in bringing attention to this issue. But we don't want to miss this opportunity to highlight what else or low light what else we're dealing with right now as far as the big issue of the day. And what's going to happen behind us here in the next I guess uh, 36 hours or so, is we're going to vote for the, an American last package of bills uh, that's going to borrow nearly $100 billion, not to defend and secure the United States, but to send some $60 billion to defend Ukraine and its borders, which divides the American people, divides the Republican Party, divides Republican voters who trust us with the majority uh, six, eight months ago now. And uh, we're going to do that predominantly with Democrat votes, maybe 90-something percent Democrat votes. We're going to do everything we can to defeat the rule and force the speaker, if he's going to do this, to be the coalition speaker that passes this rule with Democrat votes. Uh, I, I want to thank my colleagues, Mr. Roy and Mr. Norman, for voting against a rule in committee for the phony border security provision that will have no leverage to it. The Senate will ignore it, but it's designed to give political cover to those who are voting to borrow again $100 billion to defend Ukraine. Uh, we're standing against that. The American people need to understand what's happening, and we're fighting on their behalf. We wish the entire Republican conference and our speaker were fighting on, 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 on the American people's behalf as well. You know, our speaker was, a, was for FISA reform until he was against it. He was for using Ukraine to leverage border security until he was against it. 
he wasn't willing to fight uh, during the spending appropriations process to leverage border security. He promised that uh, border security was a hill we would die on and would use the Ukraine supplemental to do that. We're sorry to report he's decided not to do that, and he's not allowing us to do that by declaring not germane amendments to add border security to the Ukraine funding. Uh, Mr. Roy. Okay. Like I would just add, I mean, we are here, obviously, for the issues that involving the World Health Organization, but these things are all related, right? I mean, all of these things go to the same end result, which is this body in the House, along with the Senate, continuing to prop up and fund all of the things focused outwardly and abroad and the international organizations, the United Nations, the World Health Organizations, and then today, this week, putting out $95 billion of foreign aid, some of which some of us would support in a normal context with actual open rules, with actual debate. And when we've done our job to secure the border of the United States first. But when you have $9 billion in humanitarian aid that can get funneled to Gaza, to Hamas, right? Then we're doing the very thing the American people are tired of. We are funding both sides of the coin. And we're doing that right now with respect to Ukraine. Where we're allowing Russia to be emboldened by our foolish energy policies. We're helping them at the same time we're being told we've got to continue to fund a war in Ukraine before the American border is secure. If there's one thing Republicans stood up on, united, was that we would secure the border of the United States and we've let every single funding bill get across the floor without securing the border of the United States with a promise to use Ukraine as leverage with the administration to guarantee a secure border. And here we are completely running away from that promise. Well, not on our watch. We're going to throw everything we have at stopping this foolish capitulation by Republican leadership. Folks, I'll add, whether it's funding WHO, whether it's funding uh, the programs and, and the things we're considering, it, like Bob and Chip mentioned, it's money we don't have. It's borrowed money. When, when's enough enough? We're saying the group behind me, we're done. We're going to expose this and put a stop to it. And as we mentioned, we voted against it in rules, which is supposed to be a no-no. But the fact is, our country is at stake, both from our sovereignty, both from our national protection, and both from our economy, and we're not going to run away from it. Not now, not ever, as long as we're up here. One, one last question. What are the timelines that the American people have to know about the WHO pandemic treaty, and what can the individual American do to support your efforts? May 27th is the date they're going to be considering it. Write every, to anyone that is listening to this live stream, call your senators, tell them to get involved and to make sure this treaty comes before the Senate. And it's got to have a two-third vote uh, to pass it. Activity. We can't, we've got to get our voice back, folks. It's in so many different levels. That would be my suggestion. All right, thank all of you for covering this. Thank you for coming. Thank you all. Thank you.